This is The Signal from the Journalism School at University of King's College in Halifax. I'm Carla Rennick. And I'm Travis Devonport. This week, we're coming to you from the Killam Library at Dalhousie University. For our first story, some people are in Halifax are getting nervous about an illness half a world away. Coronavirus is spreading uh, through parts of China, and Canada has confirmed three cases. As Jacob Postlewaite reports, some people in Halifax are looking for protection, whether they need it or not. There are no cases of the Wuhan coronavirus in Nova Scotia, but that hasn't stopped people from rushing to pharmacies to scoop up face masks. We talked to a dozen pharmacies in Halifax, and they said that they are all out of these surgical masks. They assume it's because of the coronavirus, but Nova Scotia health officials say that the masks aren't as important as people think. Signal spoke with Dr. Robert Strang, who is in charge of public health here in Nova Scotia, and he says that if the virus did make it to Halifax, then face masks wouldn't be that effective. He says that because they're designed for surgery, they wouldn't be effective in stopping viruses like the coronavirus. So what's his advice? His advice is the same advice he gives for every flu season, which is to wash your hands as often as possible. And if you are feeling some flu-like symptoms, then you should just stay home. Mm. But we also want to hear what you have to say. You can find a poll right now on my Twitter at Hey, it's Jacob, and that's Jacob with a K. Thanks, Jacob. You're welcome. We're doing our show at the Killam Library at Dalhousie University. In the small towns around Halifax, a library is so much more than a place to check out books and study. It is a part of the heart of the community. Lucy Harnish has the story from Hubbard, St. Margaret's Bay. Christine Osling has been coming here since the library opened. She used to work here. Now she doesn't come here because she's paid to, but because this library is the heart of the community. Every community should have a library. I mean, a library is uh, just super important to everybody for everything. And this library, there's nothing you can ask for that they're not going to come up with for you. If they don't have it in the system, they go out of their way to try and get it. Half a century ago, Hubbard's economy was booming because of the fishing industry. These days, many of the businesses in the community have closed, including the local bank. Other businesses are only open seasonally and go into hibernation in the winter. The library in this small fishing community is still going strong. Fifty years ago, a local oil man gave money to open the library. Like many of her neighbors, Osling doesn't have Wi-Fi, so she comes here to connect with loved ones. She also frequently borrows books and movies to entertain and educate herself. I'm asking for things all the time, and uh, I come over here and it's like Christmas, sometimes twice a week. Eric Drew is a new librarian at the branch. This library doesn't see too much staff turnover, so he's lucky to have found a job here six years ago. This uh, is a community hub branch. Um, everybody in this community eventually comes to the library for something. The librarians may not turn on the kettle when you walk in, but they make this small town institution an accepting space for everyone. For The Signal, I'm Lucy Harnish. Not everyone can afford artwork that costs thousands of dollars. In downtown Halifax, an art show is trying to help by shrinking the art and the prices. And Simon Miller checked out the, checked out the show's opening on the weekend. There was a big turnout for small works of art at the pre-shrunk art show's opening night. Over 300 tiny pieces of art were packed into the gallery. The owner of the gallery says while making art more accessible helps with sales, it also creates community. As well as customers who may not know one another uh, in the, like, the world, but inside here they're like, hey, how are you? Like, so it's sort of a bit of a bonding and kind of recognizing that they all kind of have this thing in common. They love, they love artwork. Adriana Ford came up with the idea for the show 16 years ago and it has been an annual hit ever since. The two rules for submissions are that the art must measure 4 by 5 inches and must be priced at $175. Other than that, it's fair game. The unusual pieces of art were a popular hit Friday night. This is more, I guess, more open as far as what the, what the content they'll have in here 
And I mean, uh, neither of us are art experts, but we yeah. can see what we see when we look around. And it's, it's cool to see the variety of artwork in here and it's kind of more fun and playful. These paintings you're looking at here were done by Catherine Stiles. She says smaller art doesn't take any less skill. But for these, I used a little teeny tiny palette knife. And so you're closer and tighter and uh, I sit down for these where my big canvases I usually stand. So I think it's a bit challenging. The sold stickers were popping up all over the gallery with over 50 pieces being sold on the first night. So if you are one of those that's looking to buy some art, you may want to show up before the show ends in mid-February. For The Signal, I'm Simon Miller. And finally, African Heritage Month begins this weekend, but celebrations have already started. Marianne Lassong captured the sights and sounds of the opening night ceremony. I know a lot of us, we take family as our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, and our uncles, but to me, family is more than that. Family is, is my community. Family is everyone here in front of me. We need to put ourselves out there, support each other, let people know that we're here, that we exist. There's a lot going on this month. Including traditional food workshops and special film screenings. And you can find this all on our YouTube page. That's all we have for you today, but coming up next week, Travis has a story about a young entrepreneur. Yep, she's getting started in a business and helping charities while still in high school. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at SignalHFX and visit our website, SignalHFX.ca. I'm Carla Rennick. And I'm Travis Devenport. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.